And if your argument is, let me stop you already. If your argument is, oh, but how I'm gonna dodge my Riven one trick pony on a 49% win rate Heimerdinger top lane? Shut the fuck up. If that's your argument, it's just pure trash. Ellison dropped to discuss this video about just a few minutes long. I oh, can watch that. Can you link me that? We can watch that after this game. Like you have a shit guy playing with you. Oh, my Caitlyn is autofill. Oh no. What are you gonna do? You have option A, cry about it and, and rage quit and, and save your ego and flame her and absolve yourself of all blame and just quit, not become a better player, not learn anything. Or you play the fucking game with what you got. Holy fuck, people make this mistake so much. Like you're not playing one fucking game. You're not playing that one game. Oh no, I gotta troll this one game. You're not. You're fucking addicted. You play thousands of games per season. You're not playing a one game. That's not a one game issue. This solves the long-term problem. You're playing all the games at the same time. All of them. And averages will equal out. The amount of trolls, the amount of autofills, the amount of shitters you get, the amount of fucking Heimerdingers, 49% win rate you would want to dodge is gonna equal out across a thousand games. And you're gonna play a thousand fucking games because you're addicted like a cunt. Okay, here we go, anonymity. Now the more fun stuff. We're exploring several updates to champion select functionality that will here be... Here we go. So champ select an an anonymity. That's how bad, by the way, this thing. What you're gonna you, about, you What okay. you're about to read. Today, a lot of... Wait, I, I can't understand Drutted. Fucking hell. Players use external websites and third-party apps that provide all sorts of information about their teammates. With this information, players are drawing conclusions that aren't necessarily correct and pressuring their teammates into things that they might not want to do. Like picking the exact same champion every game because it's their highest win rate or most played. We think the best version of League of Legends is not one where you metagame based on the players in your lobby. Way, yep. uh, way who's on a win or loss streak or playing a different champion. Yep. And dodge or pressure others to dodge when your setup doesn't meet perfect conditions. We're still thinking about details of implement, uh, implementation here, but our starting point is likely to be hiding all summoner names and champ select for rank solo duo. Oh my god, no. That's so bad. Uh, can I rant? Can I rant, please? Or do you want to, to rant first? I mean, you can, can you can rant. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect my thoughts while you rant. Go ahead. It's so f***ing bullshit. It's so many. No, like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're going on YouTube here. No curse words. Oh, oh my god, it's so silly, it's so silly. Like, imagine you're a streamer, you get sniped by a griefer, and you even can't tell that you have a griefer on your team until it's way too late, and then you're forced to remake, or just have a miserable game. Okay, that's one part. What if you're not a streamer? Let's assume you have a 5 million Riven OTP on top that got banned out, and now you won't have a clue he's banned out, so you can't dodge, and then okay, you so end the up take again. 20% Camille, and then you're just doomed. And how are you supposed to tell? You can't check out his OPGG or anything. And like, oh my god. Like, I. So one of the things that I think I, that I'd say about this. So I, correct me if I'm wrong because, again, I started League of Legends in Season 4. Does this not bring the game back to its early roots where you just don't know? Isn't uh, that no, the way that it once was? Slowly, yeah. This game is literally going backwards. They removed Duo Q from High Elo, crippling content creation, and just like... Showing a huge middle finger to high low player base and as especially streamers. Well, like sure streamers are minority, like of the like really small minority of the like the players, but still uh, like the experience for us just got so much worse after duo Q removal <laughs> in higher elos. Uh I disagree. Um you, you can look at this from multiple perspectives. Um what they want to do in Master Elo Plus, the, the highest value thing you can aim for is competitive integrity. Removing duo for that sense is actually very, very beneficial. It does hinder content creation, that is for sure, which is why Riot needs to have really good compensatory um, plans in order. They need to put something in place, like like um, Twitch rivals, stuff like that, for people to actually converge and do the same things. Some events, some stuff where the streamers could actually do that. Um, but yeah, competitive integrity takes priority always um, in Master Plus Ladder. So I do believe that should be ELO rated, not this um, MMR-based bullshit rating as well. So that would be one more change uh, forward. Okay. And then okay. at some point, Riot was unironically considering removing all chat. And that they was were terrible. Saying, we want to fight toxicity. Oh, yeah, that's terrible because that is anti-competitive integrity. We want to value competitive integrity. What do we need? Voice chat. If you want to have... you at, at the very least, Master Plus needs a voice chat. At the very least. 
Uh, you have to have that. You absolutely have to have that. We talked about that. You have video games like fucking Overwatch, like Valorant, who is a terrible game. It only works basically because of voice chat. The only fun times I've had in Valorant was interesting inter interactions with really fun characters that we met and talked to them, and it was fun. Apex Legends. Uh, Apex is so smooth in terms of its system of pinging, control, map awareness, everything. Characters are talking. Everything is so smooth. And you basically don't even need voice chat to call, call out stuff. And it still has it. So you can actually concoct some strategies. The fact that League of Legends, the probably greatest esport of all time, which pushed esport into forefront uh, in, on the world scene, it created events unlike that, that didn't exist before. Uh, to not have voice chat is absolutely pathetic. Oh, that's a real funny word that you want to fight toxicity from the same company that added emotes and mastery. You say you want to combat toxicity. <laughs> True, that's a good point. Ways to <laughs> yeah, the whole point is to like hit him with a fucking Teemo blind and the emote in their face. And they're fighting toxicity. I mean, uh, yeah, they're trying to be annoying as possible in these cases, but uh, toxicity is just such a stupid thing to combat. It's like, what are you even combating? You're, you're fighting human nature, fighting humans, you're fighting emotion. Like, you can't really have... Um, competitiveness without a little bit of shit talking. You can't, you can't, like, have you ever gone to a playground, to anywhere, in any sort of environment where you actually have to compete, play for something, do something, without any sort of tension? If you remove all the tension, you remove the competition. You can't have sterility. Uh, it's just too fucking bland and boring if you remove everything. So chatting is absolutely necessary. Voice chat is absolutely necessary. You're trying to fight toxicity. Hey, good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck fighting human nature. Okay. Fine. All right. Let me. So let me. Let me give my thoughts on this. So I agree with you that I think that this. I think that this is bad. I think that this Why? should. Oh. See, it's really it's really problematic because this is going to be a war between content creators where there's going to be many that advocate that this is very very good and there's yes. going to be many that advocate that it's very it's very um, it's very bad. Okay. Um, this won't prevent target banning and sniping. It. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, will it, it won't prevent target banning um, or sniping because people will just remember uh, people from previous lobbies or whatnot. Um, I have a change for that. Um, if my and last if video. they see like really oddball champions, then it's still going to, you know, if the lobbies break or something, it's not going to prevent you from dodging a game where you have a bad team comp. That's going to be a thing. Um, but I guess there's less incentive now for the player who's really mad at you to just disco Nunu you. but the And people like coming in from the last game. How many times have you guys seen this? You go in a game and you have two same players who played last game and they're tilted out of their fucking minds. And they start fighting in the draft as soon as they join because they remember each other from the last game. And every time in those situations, I've tried to dispel the tension and tell them it's a new game, whatever quarrel we have, try to prove it. Vid it in the Summoner's Rift, okay? If you were right, play this game better than me. And play it out. And once you get into the like um, into loading, and you see that player, it's like whatever, you know. You're gonna probably write something to him at the start, and then you're just gonna continue play because you 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 didn't dodge him. So you just have to play, um, especially at a high elo. So that that will definitely solve those issues where people are coming in. Oh, that's you, motherfucker, the guy who inted me, you know. Problem is that people who aren't playing meta are actually probably more likely to have their teammates just get mad. Like, so for instance, yeah. if someone's playing an off-meta champion and they have a really high win rate on it, right? Like, let's okay. say that there's a player that, is um, a good point, that plays, point, like, yeah. top lane, um, you know, top lane singed or something. They have a really high win rate. Or, like, someone who legitimately plays new new mid lane and they have a high win rate and it's their most played champion. Okay. But let's their teammates the point, think that they're inting. And there's no way for them to show or prove otherwise. I mean, that, that's one of the backfires. I okay, so I, I already thought about this uh, during the last game when we talked about this. The, the thing with this, this is going to get solved with the general consciousness as it's going to grow. Because you're going to go in a bunch of games early uh, post this change. And it's going to be, oh man, is this a singe troll or a singe non-troll? And then maybe you're going to dodge even at the start. Maybe you're going to be uh, playing safe and cautionary. But that would be stupid. Uh, the more you let them run, the more the consciousness will develop and people will actually... Uh, Dodging will fall out of fashion, and people will actually play with no matter what. No matter what you get, you're going to get to play. And later down the road, like, people are going to expand, and this wouldn't be a big of a problem, because you will always, you will al almost always assume the, the best intentions of your teammates. Because why else would they do it? That They're not going to troll you on purpose, they don't know who you are. Um, especially with high low moderation being added to the table from Riot Games. So this is just absolutely great, honestly. They, they should be super, super good. 
uh, in that case. And even then, even if you see a Singe, you can ask him, like, hey, Singe, like, do you play that? Um, he, you can tell by what his response is, whether he's playing. But yeah, down the line, like, the, this shallow, um, I'm gonna dodge one, I'm gonna min-max one game, two games, a mentality is gonna fall out of fashion, people are just gonna be uh, going with the flow, playing through the randomness, and then skill will shine forth, and eventually we're gonna get much, much better competitive in integrity. So I think on that... Um... I mean, yeah, I do, I do think this is bad. I wonder what this actually does for all the Why websites. Um, because I, I can't imagine, unless Riot's been talking with the websites like OpenGG. Riot, Riot is just mad that sites like Professor OGG, Blitz are making money. And they're a greedy company, so they want to just like nuke them. That's a really good point. Maybe. Crowny just said that you I can mean, still... That, <laughs> that, I wouldn't be surprised if that is actually true. If they're actually doing that because they're mad on the money. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That could possibly be true. Because remember old league, the old client? It would give you stats for free, okay? You could check your own stats for free. And they repackage that seven seasons later and put it in fucking achievements that you have to pay for. It's fucking disgusting. You could literally go on your stats page and see like, oh, I have four pentakills, uh... 12 quarter kills on this champion, you know, that many kills, KDA, everything. You had that in the old lobby. So, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but th that means, like, this is even better for League of Legends because down the line, hopefully, if these websites fall out of fashion, they lose a lot of their traffic, eventually there's a demand for this and Riot Games re-implements this into the client itself, integrates it so you can actually check stats. Still link OPGG. That's a really good point. So if you're actually trying to prove or, like, well, this might actually promote or lead to people demanding people's OPGGs. Um, it, well, maybe not. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, I'm the not really so sure. Yeah, the, like you can't really tell right now. It can go either way. Like the, the meta could shift in. Like, oh, uh, oh, you have to show your OPGG or we're gonna dodge you. You know, Elo terrorists. But you probably won't because people tend to be lazy. Uh, most of them are AFK during the queue. Um, I don't really care personally in queue. I just check out the comps and I, I don't really like read dumbass shit people write. Um, I'm just there to play. I click play to play. Like. Um, so yeah, I don't really think that's going to be a big issue. I think eventually, like in a couple of months down the line, two, three months, if we survive two, three months with this change and people don't absolutely like blow their brains out and uh, or burn Riot Games HQ, eventually people are going to get used to it. Uh, the game will get much healthier, less do dodgier, less snipier, you know, stuff like that. So you're going to play more games. You're going to meet unlikely friends of meta picks who actually perform. And you're going to focus more on the positives than on the negatives. Uh, that's also one of the things that voice chat could do potentially. For me personally, that I have 11 screenshots mm -hmm. called dogs.png, dogs1, dogs2, dogs3 of players that if I have them on my team, I just test like Riftmaker vein. And now all of my effort saving those players is gonna be in vain. <laughs> the only way that this doesn't work. Defending your keeping intless? Okay. I didn't know people still do that, but sure. Perk is that uh, they disable chat during champ, champ select. Um, but then that that would uh, do something with like swapping. Okay, let's see actually. So speaking of swapping This is a commonly requested feature that we already see in Wild Rift. Today you have to go through an extensive discussion in chat to effectively <clears throat> swap your pick order. Can I pick for you? Do you have my champion? Uh, do I have your champion? There are lots of ways this can break down in one way or another and this is assuming that everyone in the lobby even speaks the same language. By letting teams uh, swap pick order with the press of a button. So I basically uh, didn't hear any like good points. The only one was the one with the chat mentioned. I don't know if you guys pre-watched this, but somebody in chat also mentioned like a uh, high elo good win rate of meta picks. Um, even Velkus falls into that category. Um, but then again, like the, the general norm shouldn't be like, here's the, the, where people are wrong. Like you're coming in with giga skepticism. You're coming in thinking your teammate is coming in with bad intentions. That is really bad. And it is definitely reinforced by the game culture because Riot is terrible at moderating for sure. Um, but your, your sense has to shift here. You have to think about everyone in a positive light until they give you something otherwise. Because most of, like, 99% of people are aligned in, in the goals. They all want to play well. They all want to win. Most of them are aligned, you know. Some of them will try to defend their ego a bit harder, but less animosity from the right, from the start, from the get-go is going to be super beneficial for the game in the long run. Like, I don't know how people are missing this. And, like, Ella said this is a bad change, but I feel like this is, like, a purely emotional, emotional response because I don't see anything um, that truly constitutes is a bad change. I, I think it's just going to help the game. Like, if you care about a high elo, if you care about the competitive integrity, like, Alex should be super, super for this. But, and we hope to streamline the process of crafting your draft to be successful. That's really good. That's really good. Loadout oh, recommendations. 
We provide item recommendations in the game. We want to provide rune and summoner spell recommendations during champ select. This should help narrow the gap between players who are comfortable with the rune and summoner spell systems and those who aren't. Yeah, I don't we want like to reduce this. barriers to entry and ensure players uh, have the best possible experience with the rune system when initially ramping up into the game. Additionally, this should be helpful for vet rune players who might currently go to external websites or apps to learn what to take on a champion they're not familiar with. That is absolutely insanity. Because but Riot's methodology so for doing runes and items is based on popularity. It's based on popularity and win rate, not necessarily on what is actually accurate. Yeah. Um, so and I, technically I know th streamer? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. Go. Tell us, Drotu. Technically, a streamer could mind control his entire viewer base to play something dumb, like, I don't know, Crit no no, and... Yeah, I, 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 this is like... Uh... It's just recommended system. Like, and nobody fucking uses recommended system, guys. Like, I, I'm pretty sure everyone in the league community is super skeptical of recommender systems because they're absolutely fucking abhorrent. Every time I've seen Velcos, I've sent numerous tweets to Riot Games to let me shift, to let me change and edit manually recommended system for Velcos because it's absolutely trash, okay? For years, it would recommend you to buy tier first item. Like, it was basically suicide. They were trolling people left and right. So this is for beginners. This is only going to be used by bronze players who literally don't know how to play the game. So I, I think this is just such a pointless fucking point to make. Like, oh, bronze players are going to have suboptimal runes? Who the fuck cares? it, and then Riot would recommend it to someone who's just starting out. Like, I don't like this change, but it's not that big of a deal. All follow it. Creating bigger and bigger sample size and then just ruining the beginner experience. That's mm -hmm. great, thank you, Riot. Yeah. Um, and that's apparently it. Apparently that is it. I mean, the yeah, I feel like people just want to hate on Riot for the sake of hating Riot now. At this point, it's like whatever the change happens. Oh, good one, Riot. Fuck you, Riot. I can't believe you did this, Riot. Like just come on, man. You gotta think what this, this these things are gonna do in the long run. I fell for it. I went to tear for a long time. <laughs> Got it. The intent here is actually good. The intent here is good. One of the things that I really like about this is that. They're actually putting forth the idea that Renata has three different ways to play, which is really cool. I think this is something that even pro players actually struggle with. <laughs> um, not on Renata specifically, but just in general. Um, pro players get into functional fixedness on a lot of champions, and they, they choose to play and conduct the, the champion the same way, regardless of uh, variables that surround them. So I think that... Yeah, like, I don't know why most low velo players play Renata as a poke mage. It's like so weird. Every time I call, it's like, go fucking Guardian, dude. You gotta, you gotta be Initiator. You gotta be tanky to go in. Even alluding to this being like an option is definitely something that helps the average player base. So... In general, um, I think some of this stuff is good. I think uh, some of the other Pretty stuff much is older. absolutely atrocious. But Why? Is still not. Dude, can we talk to LS about this? I, I would love to pick his brain uh, on this. Solo keys around the world. And so Yo, Chad, can we talk to LS? I, I I'm actually curious. I would really love to talk to him about this in like a deeper sense. I really want to discuss the champion anonymity.